<clears throat> Grandpa, could you please read the last story to me? Mm, it's almost past your bedtime. You have the opportunity to teach me a life lesson about patience. I've waited forever to hear this story. But could you please tell me because I really want to hear it? Is it scary? Have patience. I'm not getting any younger, Grandpa. Here we go. There were once three brothers who were traveling along a lonely, winding road. In time, the brothers reached a river, too deep to wade through, and too dangerous to swim across. It doesn't look that bad. Well, boys, that's what makes it so dangerous. However, these brothers were learned in the magical arts, and so, they simply waved their wands and made a bridge appear across the treacherous water. A little much, isn't it? Do you not remember it, brother? The Hampshire Bridge, from when we were kids? It was before his time, Antioch. He hadn't been born when we played on this bridge. That footbridge would have sufficed. They were halfway across it when they found their path blocked by a hooded figure. Why must there always be a bad guy, Grandpa? It's not fair. What makes you think the hooded figure is bad? Because, Grandpa, you don't trust people in hoods or cloaks. It's a rule. Why must every story have a villain? Well, what would be the conflict in a story without a villain? Life is full of conflicts, Grandpa. And there are no bad guys. Which pair of shoes do I wear today? No bad guy. <laughs> How many cookies can I take before Grandma sees? Well, I guess there is a bad guy in that situation. But don't tell Grandma that. Either of you two gentlemen hungry or thirsty? Uh, I have my tea. Thank you, dear. <laughs> I'll take a cookie, Grandma. You have had two cookies this evening, young man. I don't want to hear another word about it. Sleep tight. Don't stay up too late. Yes, dear. Eh, cold. Now, where were we? The three brothers on the bridge. And the bad guy. Ah, uh, yes. We'll make the bad guy a girl. How about that? A little girl. I'm not scared. Make the villain a girl. See if I care. Hmm. Uh, 
Ah, yes, yes, here. They were halfway across it, when they found their path blocked by a hooded figure, and it was death. And so, death spoke to them. Congratulations. Most people don't make it this far. She was angry that she had been cheated out of three new victims, for travelers usually drowned in the river. But death was cunning. Each of you has earned a prize for being clever enough to evade me. So, the oldest brother, who was a combative man, asked for a wand, more powerful than any in existence. I want a wand that's worthy of a wizard who has conquered death. Then the second brother, who was an arrogant man, decided he wanted to humiliate death further. So he asked for a stone. This stone would have the power to bring back the dead. I'm taking her back from you. Finally, death turned to the third brother. May I have something to ensure that you do not follow me from this place? Take it. From death he received the Cloak of Invisibility. We're all set, dear. We'll be off to bed soon. In due course, the brothers separated, each for his own destination. The oldest brother sought out a fellow wizard with whom he had a quarrel. Victor Wilkins! Back for more, have we? <laughs> they don't know when to quit, do they, Victor? No. They never do. Have you finally found the confidence to stand up to me, boy? You think I didn't see you poison that? Not much has changed since our last encounter. Hell, even I noticed. 
Naturally, with the Elder Wand as his weapon, he could not fail to win the duel that followed. dead upon the floor. The oldest brother proceeded to an inn where he boasted of the powerful wand which he had snatched from death herself and how it had made him invincible. I've secured my place in hell, you know. What you do is your business, mister. I just want to get paid. I cheated death to get this. I hold the devil's hand. Right here. And it's funny. I feel guilty for shaking it. And proud to wield it. Please, sir. I just want to get paid. Ask me if I'm scared. Are you scared? Why be afraid when you have the power to kill the devil himself? Sweet dreams. That very night, another wizard crept upon the oldest brother as he lay, wine sodden upon his bed. The thief took the wand and, for good measure, slit mm. the oldest brother's throat. And so, death took the first brother for her own. I don't think I like the story, Grandpa. Why are all these stories about death? Why can't they be happy? Well, death is a part of life. I'll be right there. Come in, Grandma. Just stay under the blankets. It will be okay. Let's just finish the story. Then we can both sleep. Meanwhile, the second brother journeyed to his own home, where he lived alone. the stone that had the power to recall the dead and turned it thrice in his hand.
to his amazement and to his delight the figure of the girl he had once hoped to marry before her untimely death appeared at once before him She was sad and cold, separated from him by a veil. Though she had returned to the mortal world, she did not truly belong there, and suffered. It's your favorite. Please, you need to eat. Will you ever stop loving me? Never stop loving me. Finally, the second brother, driven mad with hopeless longing, killed himself to truly join her. And so, Death took the second brother for her own. Coming, Grandma. Why is she knocking? Though Death searched for the third brother for many years, she was never able to find him. Sometimes, conflicts are necessary. We tend to see some things as bad, but really, they're the most important aspects of life. Stay under the blankets, okay? No matter what happens, just stay put. I love you. You are going to do great things someday. Goodbye, James. When he had attained great age, that the youngest brother finally took off the cloak of invisibility? Where he then greeted death as an old friend, and was with her gladly. And as equals, they departed this life.